So one of the possible uses of the static keyword on methods or static methods or class methods, as we sometimes call them, is to create sort of libraries, right? So one of the things we're going to find out soon is that despite the ways that we've been allowing you to program since you started this class, Java actually requires that everything be attached to an object somehow. Um, we're going to take those training wheels off coming up. Um, but until we do that, you know, it's worth pointing out that in Java, you just can't write a method by itself. It always has to be attached to something. But there's some methods that really don't need an object to work properly. And sometimes it almost seems weird to have to create an object, right? Um, and so a great example of this, I think, is, is the math library. And so I pulled that up here. I pulled the Java doc for it up here. Let me blow it up really big. Um, and what you'll see here is that... Um, the, the math library, uh, so there's no way to create a math object, actually. Uh, there's a keyword attached to this object that we'll talk about later that prevents you from actually creating it. You can't create, you can't do new math. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Instead, the math library in Java, and you're welcome to use this, this has been available to you in the homework problems and on the playgrounds, is really a container that contains a lot of useful static methods that perform mathematical functions. So let's look at some of the Java doc here. I'm just going through kind of the, the list of methods and there's, there's a gazillion in here, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. But what I want you to see is static, 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 static. You know, every single method on this class is static. And the reason is, you know, again, it doesn't really make sense to create a math object. What does that mean? You know, these are just, you know, pure functions. They don't need any instance state. Um, they just operate on their arguments. And so another way of thinking about a static function um, is that it can only operate on its arguments. The only information you're giving it, you're passing to it through its arguments. And for a lot of static methods, that's all they need. So again, look at all these math ones, right? So I can take the log of something, right? Log base 10. I can take the max of two things. Um, I can take, let's see, you know, there's a, there's a random function here. Um, there's some uh, functions to do rounding. All of these methods take, uh, only operate on their argument and they're only static. So you'll see other Java libraries like this. Math is probably the one that you are more, most likely to use in some, uh, some capacity. So there's some nice things here that are useful, like absolute value, um, I think if I remember correctly, there's an actual, actual, yeah, there's an actual mod operator here that, that behaves properly under like, unlike the remainder operator that we're all familiar with. Um, so anyway, so this is just one example of this pattern, right? Where, you know, um, what I do is I, I take a class and I give it a name that indicates the type of methods that are attached to that, but then I attach just a bunch of static methods. I don't allow the class to be created, and instead, the class side kind of serves as a container for all of these um, sort of useful methods that all have something in common. In this case, uh, because we're looking at the math library, they're all math-related. 